Hello everyone and welcome to another presentation for the Book Direct show. I am very honored to have been asked to give this presentation and thank you for joining me in learning more about how customer segmentation and um, targeting and marketing can help drive direct bookings. My name is Naeem Anis Payman and I am the Chief Revolutionary at Zivu. At Zivu we offer um, software that can help um, property managers in the hospitality space drive more direct bookings and we've also set up Cebu Direct, which is a free communal direct booking platform. So today I will be covering a few points, um, starting off with um, targeting and the importance of targeting, um, moving on to customer segmentation, um, why it is important to segment your customer base, um, how to do it, and what you need to then implement once you have an understanding of customer segmentation. And lastly, I'll be um, taking a few minutes to focus more specifically on the importance of corporate guests and how even within corporations that are looking to book with you, uh, you need to really break down their needs and try to assess the various segments within corporate guests. I hope you'll enjoy the presentation. So, why do we target? Um, whenever we sell something, it is important to understand uh, who it is that we're selling to. And in the end, what is sales? A good salesperson is someone who understands the needs of the buyer and tries to um, show them how they can solve those needs through their offering, be this a product or a service. As hospitality providers, we're obviously offering both of these. We're offering a product, which is namely usually the accommodation that the person will be booking, and there can be various add-ons that are sold alongside. But um, on top of that, there's also a service element. Um, and it is very important to not lose sight of the service element um, in general, but more specifically so when thinking about the needs of the customer and how these can be serviced. Um, Philip Copter said that there is only one winning strategy and namely that, that is to carefully define the target market and direct a superior offering to that target market. So what are the steps that we need to undertake to be able to do this? The first thing to do is to understand that the market that you could potentially be serving is usually fairly large. So it could consist of um, guests coming um, as tourists, as business travelers, families going on holidays, um, corporations booking a number of uh, accommodation properties for a series of their employees and so on and so forth. And while it is possible to serve multiple segments of the market at the same time, it is important to understand the needs of each one of those so that you can then fine-tune your offering for each guest who will be staying with you. So the first thing is to break this large market into smaller segments. Um, and once you have done that, you then need to be able to define um, the customer segments based on unique characteristics that those segments have. Uh, so to give you an example, um, a family that could be coming to book a holiday home um, will usually consist of multiple guests. Um, so that means uh, if you're renting out a, a single room, that's probably not <laughs> going to meet the needs of that family. It sounds very trivial, but these are the way um, in which elements have to be assessed to see which characteristics um, correspond to which customer segments. And I'm not saying it's a complex thing. It's just you have to take the time to do it. And for different markets, if you're operating across multiple cities or even in large cities in different areas of the cities, or if you have different product offerings in the same part of the same city even, um, you might be targeting different parts of the market with those different offerings. So the third step in targeting is to group um, customer data based on shared properties. So um, once you know that you've got, for example, families who need larger places, uh, you might also find out that you have, uh, for example, contractors coming to stay Monday to Friday. And while they are part of a completely different segment in your target market, they may have certain properties, such as that there's multiple people, they require larger places, um, which might be similar to those of um, families coming as tourists. 
And in some cases, these various um, segments of the market might actually uh, supplement each other in their needs. So for example, um, frequently contractors will book Monday to Friday and um, tourists will stay over the weekend. So that means if you can try and tweak your offering slightly during what you offer during the week and what you offer in the weekend with the same product, slightly different service, um, you can actually meet the needs of multiple segments of the market. So how do we achieve target, um, targeting? Uh, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you get your customer segmentation right. So Gary Comer says that worry about being better, bigger will take care of itself. Obviously each one of us wants to grow their business and wants to grow their profits. Um, as Buffet will tell you, uh, you have to think about it as a long-term investment and long-term gain. So by thinking about every customer one at a time and taking care of each one of them, that's the best way we can ensure that we will achieve success in the long run. So why do we need customer segmentation? How do we actually segment uh, markets? And uh, what is the outcome of all of this? So I'll start off by talking a bit about the why. So in my opinion, it's, it really helps you to understand your customers and their needs. And by better serving those needs, we can get happier customers, who in the long run will contribute to the success of our enterprise. Um, other reasons that you might want to um, ensure that your customer segmentation is right from a business perspective uh, is that you can improve your marketing messages and your ad targeting. Obviously, you want to market your products, your offering, you want to put your brand out there. But the question is, who are you aiming um, all of this marketing at. So um, you will have various marketing messages that you can come up with and even for the same customer or for the same customer segment your marketing messages may vary depending on the stage of the buy-in that they're at. So for example if they're just coming at your website for the first time you want to have a reassuring message um, that you're a serious company you can be trusted or for example that the best rates and availability can be found by booking ex uh, directly with you. Um, so these marketing messages may change as a customer goes through the booking um, process. So for example, once they start looking at a property, your marketing messages might want to focus around how that property meets their needs. Now to be able to do that, you first need to know um, who it is that you're targeting the higher level marketing messages at and who you hope to have reached to the property page by that point. And obviously if you want to go down the route of paid ads, then you similarly need to make sure that your messaging is coherent and is targeted at the customer segment of the market that you're trying to get to. Another reason that it is important to understand the needs of various segments of the market is so that you can provide superior customer experience. So that means that, um, for example, contractors who might be coming to stay Monday to Friday um, will have a certain set of expectations such as that they can easily get in um, if they're staying at the same property multiple times, then they will have gotten into a habit of collecting the code and getting in to the property fairly easily. Um, and so that means that you have to be extra cautious that if the code changes, you maybe not only send your normal communications to that guest, um, but you actually alert them that the code has changed. So basically put yourself in the shoes of your customers and try to think, um, what is it in your business that could prove a surprise um, and reduce the level of uh, guest experience that your customers are facing. Um, and, and as a bigger picture, this all helps you to develop more focused strategies to retain your customers. So once you understand the needs of your various customer segments, you can then think about how you can keep these guests as repeat bookers. Um, and obviously by getting them to book repeatedly, you hope that you can get them to book directly and thus drive up your profit margins but also um, guest loyalty to your brand. So how are um, customer segmentation uh, models looked at? There are numerous different types in which you can segment the market. Um, so I'm going to touch on two main ones and then I'll go and just do a quick overview of a couple more. So a priori segmentation in itself um, has various subcategories. So you could segment your market based on demographics. What that means is it depends on where your guests live. Um, 
that can help for example uh, see whether you have uh, if you've got say a countryside or a, um, a beachfront property that's a holiday home um, you're probably unlikely to attract um, locals you're more likely to attract people coming from large cities or looking for a break um, sorry <laughs> I started off with geographic in terms of demographics you can look at the age of the customer or the gender um, so for example a high-end uh, property um, might be something that might be fairly appealing to young people but if you're worrying that they have a party then you definitely don't want your messaging um, you're to be targeting youngsters you probably want to go higher up the age scale um, in terms of behavioral and psychographic uh, customer segmentation there's slightly uh, more involved uh, segmentation types which require more data um, which by all means is possible but will take some more of your time um, to be able to really um, flesh out who it is that you want to target. So behavioral um, patterns can be things like engagement level. So how many times someone visits your websites or has gone through your social media um, and looked at your offering or might have emailed you or contacted you before they book or even might have stayed with you previously. So it's basically the interaction that the guest has with your brand. And now to be able to effectively do this online, you need to ensure that you're tracking across all your various um, outlets uh, is linked up and that you can um, see all of that through Google Analytics or another platform um, and try to see what the different behavioral patterns of your um, visitors uh, online are as a whole. Uh, once you've done that you can then go and look at the various behavioral um, classifications and see which ones of those uh, you feel you'd like to target the most. Um, psychographics is probably the hardest in our industry um, because that relies on things like personality and lifestyle um, attitudes, so the habits that people have, um, the traits they show, um, and the behavior and the temperament. Um, to be very honest, I'm not sure where we'd start off with something as complex as that. Um, I know, for example, in Facebook adverts, you're able to look at things that people like, which could give you an indication of their lifestyle and so on and so forth. Um, but before you even get to that stage, it's probably a good um, topic to look at when you're looking at your market segmentation to decide whether or not you want to um, target your uh, guests based on their psychographic uh, information. So, the other type of segmentation that you can have in the market is needs-based segmentation. Um, this is based on differentiated validated drivers of what your potential customers have purchased in the past or are likely to purchase. Um, so what type of accommodation they would book in this case. Um, so um, as we, I described earlier, the needs of contractors will be different than the needs of family. They'll be different to the needs of a high level business executive. Um, so how can you find out what the needs of all these various parts are? Um, and that is through primary market research. So that means through surveys, through um, contacting um, potential guests or even previous guests. And you'll uh, frequently also find that there are white papers that address various needs of um, uh, different customer segments. Um, if you're in a large enough market where various consultancy agencies might already have done some of this research for you. In terms of other segmentation types, we've got things like value segmentation. So this is where you look at how much a customer is likely to spend. Um, so customers who in the past have spent high amounts um, with you are likely to spend high amounts in the future. So that might mean that they um, might be people you want to target for extended stays or who might be more likely to buy into um, luxury properties or additional services and products on top of the accommodation on its own. So um, this gives you the insight to be able to develop your product in such a way that you can make additional profit margins by upselling things um, to guests who fall into higher value um, segment um, categories. Generational segmentation is another interesting one. So this is looking at um, rough categorizations of people and what generation they're born. So you've got millennials, you've got Gen Z, you've got Generation X, baby boomers, the silent generation. And each of these um, generations are frequently um, thought as having specific characteristics. 
Um, and even throughout the pandemic, it became clear that, um, for example, millennials um, were interested in starting to travel more because um, flight prices dropped um, and accommodation prices dropped given the low occupancy levels. Um, they didn't have any commitments, they had some savings, they were not that worried about getting the virus, so um, that led to more millennial travel. So then you have to start to look at whether your product and your offering is um, suited to their needs, and if so, whether your marketing messages um, and your advertising might want to be targeted to a specific uh, generation. Life stage segmentation relates to uh, what um, level of the life cycle someone's in. So um, say, for example, you've got a property that is ideal to host um, uh, weddings. So that means you'll probably be looking at people who are in the life stage of being single or engaged and likely to get married. Um, so you will want to look at firstly ensuring that your um, property meets the needs of someone who's coming for a wedding, which is probably goes without saying. Um, and as a second stage, um, it's then to ensure that um, you specifically target the people who are likely to buy into that product. Um, another segmentation type is seasonal segmentation. And obviously this is one that is uh, very important for the hospitality industry. In many markets, we've got huge seasonality and fluctuations in occupancy levels and rates. Um, so understanding seasonal segmentation will help you pitch the product at different times of the year to different types of buyers. So for example, even if you're in a city centered location that usually has business travelers, um, it might be that, um, for example, over Christmas or over Easter, you might have a larger proportion than usual of family coming to visit um, relatives of theirs who live in that area. Um, so as seasons change, your marketing messages may also change. And this is something um, that you have to become to, to get on top of really if you want to drive direct bookings through your website to ensure that your website is kept fresh um, and um, addresses uh, what people might be looking for um, at different times of the year. Okay, so now we get to the what. Of what use is all of this? Um, and how can we achieve it practically? So once we've defined the problems um, that we want to be solved in terms of the needs that the customers have, uh, we then need to select the segmentation variable. So I just went through a long list of um, various types of market segmentation that can be achieved for various types of customers. Um, it's important to um, realize that you're not going to uh, be able to use all of those types of customer segmentation and you obviously need to choose based on what you initially want to um, conduct your customer segmentation on. Um, and so once you've done that, you then need to choose the variables for that. So for example, if you say um, you want to base it on um, a life stage, then one of the variables could be whether or not they're married, or it could be whether or not they, they have children, um, or even uh, in cross-pollination with information from some of your demographic information, such as what their age is. Um, once you have a clear understanding of the variables, um, you then need to ensure that you drive internal adoption. What that means is that everyone on your team is aware of the um, segment of the market that you're trying to target and to ensure um, that the marketing um, sales teams and your customer service teams um, are all ensuring that your um, messaging and uh, your sales pitch and your offering conform to the needs of that part of the market. Okay, so after this um, overview, I'll move on to discussing um, a bit about corporate guests and uh, the importance of um, looking at corporate guests in quite some detail. Now, this probably doesn't apply to all markets. Um, you've probably, we've got things like um, seaside towns um, that are seeing an increase, seeing an increase in staycations. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to go on for. Um, and even there, it might be that once holidays are over or um, in between, uh, basically during term times, you might need to look for other um, parts of the market. And uh, given that uh, it is difficult at the moment to get bookings through more traditional routes such as um, OTAs and listing sites, it's very important that we all focus on building up our brands and trying to attract um, different parts of the market in a targeted way. Um, so why corporate guests in particular? 
While corporate guests can be thought of as being a segment of the large market, um, I'd suggest that corporate guests should be looked at a bit more in detail as being um, B2B customers, basically, and further seg uh, segmented uh, into their own subcategories. So why should we look at corporate customers in specific? One of the most important things, in my opinion, is the fact that for them, price is secondary. secondary. Um, so why do I say that price is secondary? Uh, Often, um, business customers will not have accommodation as their biggest expense. So they will probably be um, in town for a consultancy project or for a construction project or whatever else it might be. Uh, and they will be trying to earn money for their own business. So the accommodation will just be an expense and necessary evil in some ways to achieve their uh, heightened um, turnover or trying to increase their own profits. So in terms of this, they will not necessarily be just looking to get the cheapest option. For them, for example, location might be more important to decrease the commute for the guests will be staying from the site where they'll be working at. Um, or they might be worried about how your offering will fit in with their current processes. So whether this is in terms of payment terms, being able to pay um, down the line, or in terms of flexibility of the requirements that they may have. Um, and how easy it is for them to implement the buying process of booking your accommodation into their existing systems and processes. Um, something else that is very attractive in working with corporates is that they often bring ongoing bookings um, and that results in a low cost of acquisition. So if the lifetime spend value of a specific corporate customer is fairly high, um, that means it's worth you spending more time and energy and money in trying to acquire the customer in the first place. Um, because it is likely that they're not just going to book once or they're not just going to book one room or one apartment or a house, but they might book a number of um, accommodation spaces and they might come back and book it again and again and again. Um, so in terms of trying to drive direct bookings, whether you've got that initial acquisition through a direct route or not, um, it is important to build up a relationship with your corporate customers and then try and continue getting them to come back again and again and again. Something else that um, as you're expanding your business you may find of interest is that once you've got a corporate customer, if they're large enough, you can start discussing with them and seeing what their needs are. Um, so building up that relationship of trust can also go further and seeing whether they require accommodation in another city or another town. Um, and if you've got um, enough trust um, and you've served their needs, then um, you've probably gained their trust as well. Um, so that means that if you are looking to expand and you expand to a market where one of your existing customers already has some demand, it's reducing your risk um, in breaking into that new market. So that can also be uh, fairly interesting um, for you from a business perspective. However, it's not something that you can expect to happen in the short term and it obviously takes a lot of energy um, and commitment to ensure that you build up that relationship with uh, the corporates, with the individual contacts within the corporate that you're um, in touch with in terms of the bookings, but also with the people who are staying with you as obviously word does get around and if they're happy with your offering and your service, then they're very likely to continue booking with you in that location and any other locations that you might open up for them or that you might um, be hoping that they'll support you in filling once you've opened them up. So in terms of how we break down the needs of um, corporates, there's a whole um, another science if you want called firmographics that looks at customer segmentation for um, B2B customers. So um, similar to previously we have to define what a good customer is. So a good customer could um, depend on um, the number of people who work at that company um, or at the industry that they're in um, or at um, the distance that their headquarters are from where your accommodation is located. So once you have specified what variables are important for you um, as a good customer, that basically uh, defines your qualification criteria. Um, the next step is to prepare a clean data set of leads. Now these leads could be customers who already stayed with you, or you could look at purchasing leads. Um, you can buy email lists, or you can try and put these lists together by going on Google Maps and looking at architects in a specific city who might be likely to have uh, contractors come in with projects that they manage. 
Once you've got a clean data set, you need to ensure that all the fields um, that relate to the variables that you've chosen are completed, even for your existing customers. So that might involve going back and speaking to those customers to find out more information about them. So once you've got a list of leads and you've got clarity around the variables that are important to you, then you need to filter these based on the criteria. So that means that you're not going to try and target every single corporate that is on your list of leads, but you're going to want to target the um, customers that, meet, that match the criteria that you have set. And how does this help you um, overall in what you're doing um, in offering your service to corporates? So obviously it'll help you develop your marketing strategy. Uh, by knowing what type of companies um, you're trying to target, you will know their needs and you'll be able to ensure um, that your marketing messages directly address the needs of that company. More importantly, you should also try to think about who the decision makers in that company are who are going to make the decision around booking the accommodation and what their personal needs are and what their personal um, preferences or how you can make life easier for them. Um, so you want to try and engage as much as possible with the ultimate decision makers in those companies. And obviously if you want to do targeted outbound sales, you also need to know exactly who to target. So um, as I was mentioning earlier, once you've got your list of leads and you've qualified those leads, you can then start to target those for outbound sales. Um, in terms of outbound sales, if you're new to it, um, I would suggest uh, taking a look at a very interesting book. I've actually got it sitting here because I've just been reading through it. Um, it's called Predictable Revenue by um, Aaron Ross and by Marlo Tyler. And uh, it basically goes through cold calling 2.0, as they call it. Um, and it describes at why it is not helpful to just place a cold call and expect to sell on that call, um, but how the selling process um, should be focused on how uh, we as service providers um, can try and solve the needs of our customers and then how we can go about um, trying to target cold leads, so leads that we've not um, interacted with bef before, to ensure that they're qualified leads. And once they're qualified leads, um, how we can then try and get to um, present our product and our service to someone in the company who might be influencing the buy-in. So it's a book that I definitely suggest um, and fits in greatly with this topic. And while it is aimed more at um, software companies um, I think there are some great insights for hospitality providers who are looking at growing their um, business as a real business. Um, and last but not least, before winding up, um, I just wanted to draw your attention back to the fact that you should ensure that the product and the service that you're offering matches the needs that you've identified as your customer segment that you're trying to target to have. So it's very good to go through everything that I've described so far and have a clear idea of who it is that you want to target. But it's no good just thinking um, or assuming that your offering will meet those needs. So you need to dispassionately weigh up whether the accommodation that you're providing, um, whether the service that you're providing will meet those needs. So um, to give you an example, if you've got a corporate contract uh, customer um, who is booking with you and whose staff only finish work at 7 p.m. Uh, you need to ensure that the service that you're offering, so call answering service, is available at 7 p.m. in case they have an issue when they get to the property. Um, or if you're um, deciding to target travelers who are flying in, close, if you've got property close to an airport, or even if it's further away from an airport, you have to take into account delays that might happen with travel. And um, if you're allowed check-ins at 11 p.m., it might be that your guest actually arrives at 1 a.m. Uh, and you need to think about what you would do in such circumstances and how your service will meet the needs of that customer. Because um, whether or not you're in the right uh, in terms of cutting off your check-ins at 11 p.m., if a customer that you've tried to target and um, you've got as a direct booking uh, after a lot of um, sweat gets to the property and can't get in, then that's basically a wasted time on your end. You'll lose out on money potentially if you have to give a refund. Or more importantly, that will affect the image of that customer on your brand. And obviously it will not result in brand loyalty. It can result in negative reviews and it'll definitely not um, lead them to make any referrals of uh, your brand or your accommodation to their friends and family. 
So really the whole point behind um, the discussion that I've had um, with regards to customer segmentation and um, identifying your target market and understanding the needs of your customers is to reflect on how we can best be of service um, to the guests who will be staying with us to offer them an exceptional level of customer service and a heightened guest experience so that they can have a reinforcement on the idea of a direct booking um, and um, increased engagement with your brand um, drive up the loyalty and help them become evangelists in spreading the word about your brand, your accommodation and your service to help drive even more direct bookings. Thank you for following me and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the Book Direct show. If you want to get in touch with me, you can get on our website zibu.com and just fill in the contact form or get on the live chat and one of my colleagues um, will put you in touch with me. Have a nice day. Goodbye.